Flatline, King City, a city devoted to the glory of God, but in her dark underbelly, there are villains gathering, evil men who seek to steal God's glory. Will King City find her hero? Can she be saved and restored to her former glory? For the answer to these questions and more, tune in every week to The King City Chronicles. Thanks for letting us use your invention last week, Uncle Phil. It really helped a lot. Yes, my heart shield saved the day. Uh, oh, well, the heart shield helped, but it was really God's word that saved the day. Really? Oh, yeah. I'm learning more and more each week about how God's word can help turn people's lives around. Here, I'll get out the good news right now, and I'll show you. Ah. Uh. I think this week's story is about a man named Ezra. Ezra? Was he a king? No. Was he a warrior? No. Nope. A carpenter? No. Nope. Well, what did he do? And how did he rebuild Jerusalem? Well, actually, he was a teacher. God used a teacher? Yep. To rebuild Jerusalem? Uh, not just any teacher, a Bible teacher. A Bible teacher? Like these teachers? Exactly. And just like these teachers, they weren't satisfied to just obey God on the outside. You see, the temple and the city wall of Jerusalem had just been rebuilt. And Ezra came to rebuild the hearts of the people in Jerusalem. He loved God and kept God's word deep down in his heart. Deep down in his heart. His heart! That's it! Well, well that's what? Keep reading. I've got a plan. Well, I'll talk to you later. Well, hey, I'm not done with the story. There's so much more. Like, like, did you guys know that King Artaxerxes was not a follower of God? But he respected Ezra as an expert on God's laws. The Bible says, For Ezra had devoted himself to the study and observance of the law of the Lord, and to teaching its decrees and laws in Israel. You see that? It was Ezra's heart for the laws that impressed the king. He sent Ezra to go teach them to the people. The king wanted them to repent and, and follow God's law so that God would not be angry with the king. When Ezra saw how the people were disobeying God, he tore his robes and he cried. And as he cried, he confessed the sins of the people of the Lord. Then Ezra gathered all the people and told them to repent. And then that means that, means that they turned away from evil ways and turned to God's ways. And they agreed and they even made a plan to change. Hey, that's it. That's how we can rebuild King City. The, the obliterator may have damaged the heart of our fair city, but if we teach God's word to everyone and we all turn back to God, it will make King City even stronger. <laughs> wow. Oh, yes. And why don't you hand out T-shirts and put everyone on serve teams huh. and oh. go out to help the community? Well, hey, that's a great idea, pal. Thanks. Hey, it's the obliterator. Hey, you're trying to mock me. Did you figure that all by yourself? You may mock me, but you cannot mock God. You're too late with all your save the world nonsense. After you zapped my mind of power last week, I took the wisdom cube to the King City Library and soaked up enough wisdom to fill a college campus. Oh, no. So prepare to suffer, puny hero. No! Kingdom Crusader! Oh, thanks! Your heart is safe God. from the obliterator! Thanks! Scripture guy! Why must you always show up when I'm having fun? Your kind of fun might be fun for you, but it's not fun to fun around in a fun way that's not fun for others. Yeah. I didn't understand a word you said. You're making my brain hurt. Prepare to be blasted! Oh no! You'll never get past the plutonium heart! I'm too smart for your plutonium heart. I knew from the start that I could blast you apart! You Obliterator, I think you've gone insane! Yeah, I just can't resist that green egg, Zuntam. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Seuss. Now, you like to feel some pain? Oh! You'll be going down the drain! You've <laughs> gone insane! Hey, that's not fair! You're off the chain. Enough with the nursery rhyme. You two have come to the end of your time. Oh, no. Oh! Oh, why can't I blast that thing? Because we have a heart that's built for the king. Oh, I'm going to go away. I'll be back to fight another day. 
<laughs> we chased him off! Hip hip hooray! Yes! <laughs> well, where did you get that wonderful heart, Scripture guy? From the Philistine. Oh. It's his new improved plutonium heart. He said he wanted to give it back to God. <gasps> That's huge! Uncle Phil wants to give his heart to God! Uncle Phil? You mean the Philistine? Yes, right, that's what I meant. I just, I just mean that it's a big deal that the Philistine wants to repent, just like the people in Jerusalem did during the days of Ezra. I really do think he was sorry. He had tears in his eyes. God must be changing his heart. Hey, I just remembered. What does it say? Mm -hmm. Huh? Where is it? Was that the time um, when Ezra and the people were repenting? Yes, absolutely. Yes. And, they, and I remember that they came to the city and there was a whole bunch of men and women and they, and they were all crying too. And, and then they were, they were sorry and ready to turn back to doing things God's way. This is a big step for our former enemy, the Philistine. Yes, it his, is. God has gotten a hold of his heart and has turned it back to God. And when we turn back to God, he can build his kingdom on us. Well, I can't wait for the day when the Philistine says our favorite phrase. Let's all say it together, kids. We, we give everything, everything to honor our king. king. See you next time. See you, kids. <laughs> <laughs>